I'm Sergeant Vincent Cole with the Phoenix Police Public Affairs Bureau. The information, audio, video, and pictures you're about to see are intended to provide details as we currently understand them of an officer-involved shooting that occurred on August 28, 2022. This video may contain strong language as well as graphic images which could be disturbing to some people. Fewer discretion is advised. The incident began around 8.30 on a Sunday night near 27th Avenue and Deer Valley Road when Phoenix police began receiving reports of shots fired in the area. Callers described a man shooting near a local motel and restaurant. Here are excerpts of several 911 calls received. Phoenix 911, where is your emergency? Hi, my name is Tim at West Deer Valley, and I believe there's a man behind us in front of the firing an automatic weapon. Oh. That there? Huh? That was that what I just heard right now? Yeah, right now. Phoenix nine one one, where is your emergency? There's this guy like shooting. Oh, he just threw the wind. He what's just the, threw something at the, the window. I'm at the across from the. He's got a gun in his hand with like a helmet on. He shot like twenty times. Okay. He just he just broke the window. Of the he just, okay, hit the he's, window. He's, he's in the, okay. and he's at the parking lot. He's walking around. Phoenix 911, what is the address of your emergency? Uh, we're on Deer Valley Road. We're at, uh, by I-17. Uh, there's a shootout in the parking lot. Okay, what's the, do you know the address? I don't know what the address is, man. I'm not from this part okay. of the town. Do you, know, do you know where the shooter is? Uh, they're in the parking lot right now. The shooter is still in the parking lot? Yeah, there's like a white vehicle shooting okay. with another individual. Okay, I'm gonna. We have officers headed out there right now. Yeah, there's like a white vehicle shooting okay. with another individual. Okay, I'm gonna. We have officers headed out there right now. Much of the incident was captured on surveillance cameras from several businesses in the area. The cameras from the motel record video only. So we have taken the silent video from the motel and matched it to the nearest second with the sound of recorded surveillance video from a gas station next door to give you a better understanding of the events that took place. Video from inside the motel shows the suspect leaving his room wearing tactical gear, including a helmet, a ballistic vest, a gas mask, knee pads, and armed with a rifle and holding a Molotov cocktail. Once outside, he almost immediately began walking around firing his rifle at buildings and vehicles. Less than 30 seconds later, as the suspect is walking through the parking lot, a white car pulls in. The suspect keys in on the car and opens fire on it, striking and killing an adult male and an adult female. Three other people inside the car take off running. The suspect continued to wander the parking lot, firing off dozens of rounds at random unoccupied cars. He made his way closer to a restaurant with people inside and threw a Molotov cocktail at the window. The window did not break and the device did not ignite. The suspect came in contact with several community members that he pointed a gun at but did not shoot. For the next several minutes, the suspect walks around randomly, firing dozens of shots. Some of the bullets flying across Deer Valley Road, piercing cars and buildings, injuring a couple of innocent bystanders. 
As police neared the scene, the dispatcher advises shots are still being fired. As of 2043, they are still hearing shots being fired. And we do have one victim so far that was shot in the ear and the arm. As officers arrived on scene, they were immediately met with a barrage of gunfire. Two officers were injured. One was able to return fire but did not hit the suspect. Officers used call signs to identify themselves on the radio. Terminology such as 933 Nora identifies a specific patrol unit. In this radio transmission, you will also hear 999, which is a police radio code for an officer needing help urgently. 934 Nora, I'm thinking around. 934 Nora, I'm thinking around. 9.30 grill for my partner's hit. He's in the parking lot of... 9.30 West Deer Valley. 9.99. West Deer Valley. On Charlie Deck, 9.99. 9.30 I'm here. Body worn cameras are used by all officers assigned to patrol and several specialty units. Per policy, they are worn at mid-torso level and capture the view of the line of sight from that perspective. It's important to note that the body camera does not capture everything the officer sees, and the officer does not see everything the body camera captures. When activated, both audio and video turn on. The body-worn camera has a buffer of video without audio for the 30 seconds prior to activation. This feature is designed to capture incidents that happen suddenly where an officer doesn't immediately activate the camera. The Phoenix Police Department does not currently use in-car camera systems. One of the injured officers was pinned down by gunfire. Other officers devised a plan to safely go in and extract him from the area. The injured officer was loaded into the back of a police patrol Tahoe and driven to a local hospital. Body-worn camera footage of the initial contact is not available as the officers involved did not activate their camera. Take him. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Go. You're good, buddy, you're good. You're good. The gunfire from the suspect eventually stopped. When officers approached him, they found him dead from an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound. Investigators processing the scene located nearly 200 spent rifle casings, five empty magazines, unused flashbangs, which is an explosive device used to temporarily disorient a person and other tactical equipment. The officer who returned fire in this incident has been on the department approximately four years and is assigned to the Cactus Park Precinct. The suspect in this case has been identified as Isaiah Williams, a 24-year-old male. This incident is the subject of an internal investigation. It will also be reviewed by the Maricopa County Attorney's Office. Conclusions about whether the actions of the officers are consistent with department policy will not be made until all facts are known and the investigation is complete. This video was intended to inform and educate the public about a critical incident in our community. You can learn about the Phoenix Police Department's transparency policy on our website. If you're like me, you've probably tried to learn Photoshop online and found it quite frustrating. And it's for new surveillance video tonight shows the violence that unfolded outside a hotel in North Phoenix. It happened nearly two weeks ago. This is shocking video. We've seen a lot of video, but this is unbelievable. Two innocent people were killed, two officers shot, three others hurt when a gunman fired off hundreds of rounds in a parking lot. And we need to warn you, the graphic video is something and it may not be suitable for everyone in your family. Fox 10's Irene Snyder joins us live with more. Irene, this is really unbelievable. 
Well, John and Christina, good evening. It really is incredible, unbelievable. As you mentioned, video, me and my photographer were looking at it. Just came in a couple of hours ago and really just seeing the moments of shots. When I, there were so many gunshots that you can just hear. You'll see in a moment all the gunshots that went off, dozens and dozens of rounds that were, fi that were fired. As you mentioned, two people are dead following this incident. Five injured, two of those were Phoenix police officers. Phoenix 911, where is your emergency? Newly released 911 calls and surveillance videos. Showing what happened back on August 28th when police say 24 year old Isaiah Williams started firing an automatic rifle in a days in parking lot. There's a man behind us in front of him firing an automatic weapon. He's got a gun in his hand with like a helmet on. He's shot like 20 times. Police say it all started around 8.30 p.m. near Interstate 17 and Deer Valley. The suspect seen walking out of his hotel room wearing a helmet, a ballistic vest, a gas mask, also holding a Molotov cocktail. He then headed outside to the parking lot where he started firing. He killed two people who were in a car driving into the parking lot. Three others you can see here got out of the car and ran away as the suspect continued firing. Some shots went across Deer Valley Road hitting cars and bystanders. When officers arrived on scene, the gunman immediately started firing at them. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Two officers were injured and rushed to the hospital. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. go. The suspect later found dead in the parking lot. Police believe he shot himself. Two others lost their lives and five people, including the two officers, were injured. Police found 200 spent rifle rounds, five empty magazines, and unused flashbangs. said one of the men was the aggressor, the initial aggressor, which was that the person who was stabbed or the person who... So the initial aggressor for the road rage incident was driving a green Jeep. Again, that's parked over here off of 16th Street. He was the individual that was stabbed multiple times. He was also the same individual that brandished the handgun and fired shots at the other vehicle. So did the driver of that Jeep, did he, uh, for lack of a better phrase, instigate this whole issue? Do you know uh, how his role that he played in it as it began? So as far as the initial information that we, we have, the gentleman in the, the Jeep, he was the one that instigated the road rage incident that came to a fight over here at the intersection of 16th Street and Greenway Parkway. As far as what led up to the, uh, the stabbing and shooting, that's still under investigation. Detectives are going to speak with all the witnesses and try to identify exactly what led up to the critical portion of this incident. But up until that point, the guy in the Jeep hadn't like brandished a weapon yet, we know, hadn't, you know, shown a weapon of any kind that up until that point? So what we're getting right now is uh, what I've, I've already spoken about. Everything else, those questions are going to be answered with the detectives as they investigate and start speaking with all the different witnesses. Uh, as you can imagine, the time of day, there are other witnesses that watched this occur. So they are being spoken to by officers right now, and eventually they'll be spoken by detectives to really figure out and hatch out exactly what led up to the shooting and stabbing. Can I just clarify? Yes. So the man in the green car was the initial aggressor. Um, then they got out and fought. That's when someone in the black car stabbed the person in the Jeep, then the person in the Jeep shot. Right? That is correct, absolutely. Thank you. No one's been charged with anything yet? Again, detectives are still on their way out here. This is just the preliminary uh, information. Uh, it's still subject to change. So everybody that we have or that's involved in this case, officers are with them, uh, detained or being treated at the local hospitals. It's a pretty extensive scene and investigation. Do you have an estimate time as far as the uh, closure and what roads will be affected right here? No, it really depends on the detectives themselves. And again, like you said, it's kind of a chaotic scene. There's multiple uh, people injured. They're all at different locations as well as multiple witnesses. So the streets could be closed for a significant portion of the day. Do you have a significant amount of witnesses because since there aren't any homes or anything around here, I mean, it's kind of sparse. So were there plenty of cars still on the road? Yeah, or? we had multiple people calling into 911, giving us information as well. All those people are being spoken to right now. Um, any cell phone video capture this or surveillance video of any kind? 
Uh, we're still waiting on the investigators to come and check with all the different witnesses. As far as we know right now, I haven't been informed of any kind of body cameras or any kind of uh, cell phone video at this time. Can you just speak to the fact there's an eight-year-old girl in critical condition at the hospital right now because of a road rage incident. Another man has been stabbed. Just, just speak to this. I mean, what it, it shows is um, everybody will get frustrated. Uh, our suggestion is if you are found in a situation such as a road rage, just stop, park, call 911, have officers respond, and let us try to deal with the different parties and find out uh, a conclusion between your guys' disagreements. Give me advice to that person who is driving down the road and, and doesn't realize just how frustrated they're getting, you know? It's a busy world that we live in today. And that would be me speculating on somebody else's emotions, which I'm not going to do, but uh, just for your viewers, if a situation with road rage occurs, best thing to do is, is pull over. If you don't feel safe pulling over, next thing to do is call 911 and dispatchers will kind of guide you to where the officers are. And don't be a hero. If you see something going on with somebody else, it's best to be a, a good witness rather than try and do something on your own. Oh, what we encourage everybody to do is call 911 and allow us to, to handle the different disagreements between the parties. Do you know, um, how many times the person in the green Jeep was stabbed before they fired their gun and where they were stabbed? Right now, preliminary information just suggests that he was stabbed multiple times. We don't know exactly how many times. That's the job of the investigators to come out working with the hospital staff to figure out exactly what wounds, how many wounds, and how critical they were. Kind of same thing with the bullets, shots fired. Absolutely. How many, shots? Um, how many times did it, was the eight-year-old girl shot once? Do you know where? Okay, so as far as the uh, bullet strikes and, and how many shots were fired, we don't know the exact number right now. The job of the investigators to come out, check the entire scene, uh, canvas the area, including the neighborhoods, and find out where all those bullet strikes landed, how many hit the vehicle, as well as the different injuries to all the victims that were involved. Have you recovered the gun and the knife? Uh, that's still something that the detectives are going to be working on. I know we have officers out here that are standing by the vehicles, so detectives will go ahead and do a further investigation on the vehicles and locate all evidence that's uh, related and associated to this and case here. And I'm sorry, I know you've no, been... that's okay. So to clarify, the person in the car behind us right here only had injuries to the hand. So it's a black car that's behind us. I don't think you can see it. It's uh, on the road itself. Yes, the driver of that vehicle had an injury to his hand. Uh, he was in the same vehicle that the eight-year-old uh, victim was in, and the eight-year-old victim is the one that was shot. Was it a gunshot wound? For the, for the male? Man. We still don't know at this time. Again, the detectives will be able to work with the medical uh, personnel at the hospital and, and try to find out what led to that particular injury. How many people were in that one? car? Was it a family, you said? So there was three occupants in the vehicle. Again, that's preliminary information. Detectives will still speak with everybody involved, including witnesses. Uh, but right now, indications show that nobody else uh, ran from the vehicle, and it was just those three involved. So it was the adult male, eight-year-old. And then there was an adult female passenger. Adult female. Was it their daughter? Uh, right now, we're still working with the family, trying to identify the relationships between everybody involved. So is that, there's a third car back there. Is that just a witness car? Yeah, so the, the third vehicle back there is just a witness car. Uh, like uh, somebody mentioned, there's not a lot of housing, uh, residential uh, areas in this area. There was a lot of vehicle traffic, and we had multiple people calling into 911. Was it the female in the black car that had the injury to the hand? No, it was the male driver who was engaged in that fight with the uh, gentleman who was stabbed. Okay, and which car was the female in? A female was in the black car over here on uh, Greenway Parkway. And she is uninjured? Correct. Okay. All right. Well, if I have no other questions, um, thank you guys very much for coming out, and I appreciate your cooperation and patience with me coming up here.